So this is the vacuumator or vacuum pump. Let's go macerate some sewage. So in a vacuum toilet system, like on some ships and airplanes, there obviously needs to be a vacuum pipeline, like you can see here. Have a listen. So that's the sound of atmospheric air entering a vacuum pipeline, which also happens every time we flush. So imagine if all the vacuum were to be gone. No one on board would be able to flush. What a nightmare. But that's where this vacuumator comes in. You can think of it as a sewage blender and a vacuum generating pump. So why are we getting ready to dismantle it now? Well, like I said in previous videos, stupid people sometimes put stupid things in toilets. And today we have a clog that's preventing vacuum from reaching its normal level. So unless you want to directly touch sewage and get real dirty, I suggest you rinse the vacuumator with fresh water first by closing the sewage inlets and then allowing fresh water to flow through the vacuumator we want to work on. Now for safety, you should create the proper permits to work and in this case it's a cold work permit. Make sure to properly tag out and isolate equipment before placing the permits so everyone can know what job is taking place and that all preventive safety measures were conducted such as the electrical isolation of the machine and the estimated time you require to complete the job. So of course, before disassembling, you should already know the basic overview. Here we have an x-ray vision view of what's going on inside. First, we reach the vacuum receiver, which is connected to pressure transmitters that control each vacuumator. Then, there's a suction chamber which will receive the sewage next to a pair of macerator knives. It's like a blender. And this shaft is connected to a vacuum impeller inside the rotor housing that sends the macerated sewage to the pressure chamber, which later will go to the sewage treatment plant. If it sounds a little confusing, don't worry. As always, we'll go step by step. Finally, after all the preparation, let's get started. First, we'll remove the glass cover to drain the flushing water. Here's the suction chamber and inside we can see the macerator. Before removing, inspect the rubber on the glass plate. Its thickness should be more than the groove to ensure sealing. And here we can already see things that shouldn't be going in the toilet. But let's move on. Now we must move the joining clamp that unites the vacuum piping and the suction flap with a hex wrench. Then loosen the suction flange bolts and then knock lightly with a hammer to separate it. However, hold on tight. Here are the two macerator knives. Together, they cut up and soften raw sewage to commute it before treatment. First, we remove the fixed stationary knife, but be careful. Obviously, its edges are sharp. And then hold the rotating knife in place and remove it as well. Here you can see and imagine how it rotates and blends sewage. The next step is to remove the guide bolts and end flange nuts that align the rotor housing and hold the end flange in place. When removing the end flange, hold the rotor housing to prevent it from falling on the impeller inside. Here we can see 
the vacuum impeller, which works like a screw pump. And these two vanes create a vacuum on the suction side and on the other side pressure to discharge it in the pressure chamber. These vanes are very important. They are what initiate the vacuum generation and any damage due to stupid things in toilets directly affect the vacuum system. As you can see here, this is what I could pull out from the suction chamber and rotor housing. And here we find the cause of our problems. At this point, I usually check the condition of the mechanical seal and pressure chamber before reassembly. To start reassembling, this o-ring that goes between the rotor housing and pressure chamber is a little tricky to put on. I like to put some Vaseline on the o-ring and place it behind the housing, allowing it to stick without affecting its performance. And it will make future alignment much easier. So in this case, since I'm alone, I make a base using wood and some shims to keep the housing in a level position before placing the impeller. It has a pin for the macerator on the suction side and a mechanical seal orifice on the pressure side. We then place the end flange with its o-ring and guide bolts to maintain alignment in the housing. Afterwards, secure the end flange and tighten the guide bolts evenly in a cross formation. Then feel to check if it's tightly secured. Okay, now let's check out the front. Let's put back the macerator by aligning the pin on the vacuum impeller with the hole on the macerator and verify free rotation. Usually with pumps, you should tighten impellers and rotating equipment with a specific torque, which in this case it's 30 newton meters. Remember to secure the macerator in place and tighten till you hear the click. After that, Let's secure the fixed knife again in a cross formation before starting with the suction chamber. You can see here in the pipe connection that it's uneven, so we must first loosen the suction flap. Hold it in place with a screwdriver and loosen it with a hook spanner. Now you may raise or lower the flap to allow this rubber clamp to slide over, as you can see. It may need some readjusting after securing the suction chamber, but don't worry, even alone, it's easy. Tighten the clamp with a hex wrench, but not too much, you might deform it. And finally, the glass cover and its rubber. Carefully place it and secure it, but don't over tighten. The acrylic material might crack. <sighs> Finally done. Now all that's left is to prime the vacuumator once again with water and allow it to completely fill up the suction and pressure chamber. Finally, we just test it to see if the vacuum pump can generate the standard vacuum pressure. We allow atmospheric pressure in the vacuum receiver until it activates its automatic start point and inspect for any leaks or failure to generate vacuum. But as you can see, we have a total success. To complete a job well done, we set everything in normal operation position and the only person who can remove a tag out is the same person who put it on, which in this case it's me. And of course, leave any mess clean. Don't let others clean your mess for you. So that was the vacuumator. 
I'm sure in the video it seemed like a very quick job, but it actually took two hours to finish. But I'm pretty sure with more experience and with somebody helping with an extra pair of hands, <laughs> it could have been done a lot quicker. Anyway, as always, thanks for sticking with this newbie. And thank you for all the comments and motivation you guys give me. It truly is an honor to think that wow, these videos get some interest and motivate some cadets also that about life at sea. Also, if there's a vacuum system on your vessel, you can show this to the crew and show them what not to put inside. Come on, be smart, not stupid. Anyway, success and nothing else, and till next time, seafarer.